I first visited Seoul in 1973 as a young traveling musician, and I've had the good fortune to return many times. I've witnessed its dynamic development, and in particular how old and seemingly derelict structures have been transformed into works of art, beauty, and functionality, encapsulating the fascinating history of Korea for anyone who is interested to enjoy. Hello, my name is Alan, and you're about to see just three examples of Korean ingenuity in taking something that would probably have been destroyed and instead creating treasures for your heart if you are willing to seek them out. The first such place is the Cheonggyecheon stream. In 1973, I remember this being a covered open sewer running across the city with traffic on the elevated roadway above it. Not very nice in those days, but today the elevated roadway has gone, but the stream has been totally transformed into a beautiful walkway, actually sunken between the busy streets of the city. It starts near Gwanghamun and winds its way east with beautifully landscaped vistas hosting trees, shrubs, flowers and wildlife. Like a little piece of the countryside, making it a favorite oasis to get away from the noise of the bustling city. You can cross over from one side of the stream to the other on stepping stones or by using one of the many bridges which carry traffic and pedestrians to their places of work. There are lots of reminders of Korean history painted on tiles along the walls of the enclosed stream and it's one of my favorite places to relax in Seoul. Next we have Solo 7017, an old elevated roadway originally designed to ease traffic flow. Following the reorganization of the traffic system, it was lovingly transformed into a wonderful park where people can stroll and relax in the middle of the busy city. It stretches from the side of Seoul Station, where you can see a great view of the old station building, and runs between the towering office skyscrapers toward Namdaemun Market. There are numerous tubs, containers, and even water lily pools exhibiting an incredible range of different species of plant, tree, or shrub, each one labeled for you to learn about and enjoy. Although on the day I visited there were no musicians, there is often live music to entertain the passers-by and uplift the spirit. Finally, you really should take some time out to visit the Seoul Iris Garden and the neighboring multi-sports center in front of Dobong Sands subway station. This is a fine example of using a previously derelict piece of land and a crumbling defense structure to create a beautiful park, a multi-purpose center for both indoor and outdoor sports, and a multitude of artists' workshops with display areas and coffee shops, all fashioned from an old barracks and military defense wall. It retains many elements of its original functions, along with some armory from earlier military use, and even a memorial to the Berlin Wall as a reminder to visitors of past world conflicts. The new observation tower enables visitors to view the area and look over the Iris Park, which is a must for picnics and pleasant strolls among the flower beds and through the winding paths. What makes these three places so fascinating is the ingenuity of taking something that was ready for demolition and artistically turning them into places that should be high on anyone's list to explore on their visit to Seoul. They are wonderful examples of how, with ingenuity, something that has lost its original purpose can be restored for the benefit of everyone. <laughs> 